Hey, good morning. My name is Matt J. Doyle. Welcome to TAP Interviews, presented by Easy Way. Hey, good morning, everybody. How are you doing, Steve? Welcome, Steve Delatori, a great actor and a great person. How are you doing? Thank you so much for having me this morning, Matt. You're welcome. So we just want to know a little bit about what you do. Man, wow. Um, well, uh, again, first, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, what do I do a day in the life of me? Uh, you know, my primary purpose, um, as, as, uh, as you will know, is um, being a caregiver to my, to my wife, Miss Tracy. She's the love of my life. Uh, she's been an inspiration to me. She's been my number one fan from many years back uh, when I first got into the, uh, the acting industry. Um, so, so yeah, you know, I'm, um, my, my priorities are taking care of her and, uh, still keeping busy in the entertainment industry, uh, keeping my own identity and, um, getting in when I can. Awesome. So you're an actor and can you tell us some of the things that you've been on? Some, some of the big productions that you've been on. So my first, um, my my uh, my first time on set down here in Los Angeles many moons ago. It was on Ocean's Eleven, and uh, I was just a background extra at, at a bar scene on um, Hollywood and Vine. And uh, on lunchtime, I got to spend it watching basketball game with Brad Pitt on one side and George Clooney on another. And I knew that uh, that I was in the right industry. I just I felt right at home. I, I loved it. Uh, from then on, you know, I, I did a, a lot of background work to get my uh, my union card, and from then I proceeded to get an agent and started going to class and uh, started going out for for actual um, auditions myself. I booked a couple of national commercials. Um, I've had a uh, a couple of uh, independent films, and uh, you know, just uh, trying to plug away. You know, it's not an overnight success story like one would would think so it's a it's a tough grind so can you tell us uh you know a little bit about the national commercial so yeah so my first national commercial was a cc's pizza commercial where i played a mafioso vampire and uh, the premise was i was um the garlic the pizza had so much garlic on it that it could whack a mafioso vampire and it was kind of cool, like with the pompadour and the fangs and whatnot. And um, it was my the first time my agent actually called me. She said we booked it, but now they want you for the print, and so we're going to negotiate the price. And I was just like, yes, negotiate, hallelujah. So uh, yeah, that was my first experience with that. Um, then I had a couple of other um, automotive commercials, uh, national, and um, an insurance commercial. And, uh, yeah, things of that nature. Awesome, Steve. So, yeah, so you just go, go back a little bit. You were talking about being on the set in, in a movie with Brad Pitt and George Clooney. So how was that? You know, that was, uh, God, it was the experience of a lifetime. And actually, one of the scenes, I was, uh, I was decked out in a three-piece suit, and I was walking out of the nightclub with two ladies on either side, and crossing Brad Pitt, and it was funny because when they when they uh, it was it was uh, just MOS right, and so he was walking, and I was walking the other way, and he's like, "Look at you, stud," and <laughs> I was just like, "That's right, Brad Pitt called me a stud, right on, we're good." Um, but no, it was it was just a really good experience, you know. Yeah, it sounds like it was. And how was George Clooney to work with? You know, it, they, these guys were so cool. They were so relaxed. And, you know, they actually made a bet, uh, a wager over the basketball game. I forget which one bet the other one a dollar, right? I bet you a buck so-and-so makes a shot or something like that. And uh, they, they were just regular guys at work, you know, and they just happened to be superstars. Uh, but they were just regular guys at work, and they were so cool. They weren't standoffish. I'm like, you know what, that's the kind of actor I want to be, you know. Um, I, I do believe in myself. I believe in my skill set. And I believe it's 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 the journey, um, and, and and I do believe that, that I'll make it to a level someday. But when I get there, I want to maintain the same kind of personality, the same kind of uh, presence that I have now. 
you know, just a regular guy when you're at work, you're doing work and you're doing business, but to not like, you know, put yourself above uh, another person or something, they, they made it real easy to work with. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, uh, tell us a little bit about your talent agent and talent manager that you, that you have right now. Good, good. So, um, I think it was probably, um, November of 2019 that I, um, I started looking for a manager just because I, I didn't feel that I was, that I was, uh, optimizing all of my resources and I didn't have all my ducks in a row. I had a lot of things going on. I was on all the websites. I had recent headshots. Um, I trying to play around with social media, but I, I just wasn't, um, it wasn't as organized as I could be. It wasn't efficient. And um, so I actually thought I was looking for a new agent, but it turns out uh, what I needed was management with, I had all the ducks. I just needed help getting them in a row. And uh, you know, I, uh, Gina from top 10 talent, came across my profile and asked me to submit my stuff to her. She in turn um, gave me a, a two-day turnaround and asked me to uh, submit a couple of self-tapes, which I did. And um, then she responded and she said, look, I I'd love to work with you. You have a lot of potential and, you know, I'd like to, uh, you know, to, to make this thing happen. And so when I, um, when I started working with Gina from Top 10 Talent, it was amazing. I was able to scrub all of my – profiles, uh, my platforms that I was on. I, I made everything uh, kind of mirror each other. So I had the same headshots on all the platforms. Um, I was able to to uh, to kind of uh, take out all the wrinkles of my resume. So I had everything had had looked exactly alike because I have it was all disjointed before I got together with her. Um, so she helped me with organization of that organizing my um, my social media. She gave me a lot more confidence. I had a lot more self-confidence in what I was doing. And that actually helped me move forward and look for, for an agent that wanted to represent me not only commercially, but also theatrically, basically across the board. Whereas before, I only had someone representing me commercially. So I was going out and all the gigs that I've gotten um, in the film industry, you know, uh, TV wise and, you know, uh, film credits, I have all been, uh, self submit. And, um, so Gina gave me the, uh, the, the organization and the confidence to go out and look for an agent who would actually represent me across the board. And, um, and that's what I did. And that's what happened earlier this year, right before the pandemic hit. I, um, I came across uh, Shauna and Kelsey from the Happen Agency, and um, we got together. We did a meeting on one of the um, – it was either a, a Zoom or a Skype or something like that, and we instantly fell in love with each other. We just felt um, this, this confidence and this energy, and um, they knew that, that there was something in me that they liked uh, and, and that they believed in and that they believed that they could promote it and, and push forward. And get me to the next level and I believed in in their confidence in what they do and um, and we got together and um, even though things have been slow during the pandemic uh, we've booked quite a few gigs so far in the last few months and I'm really excited about that that's awesome Steve so uh Tell us a little bit about your life with your uh, wife. I'm sorry? Tell us a bit about your life and your uh, wife. Oh, yeah. So um, so all the entertainment stuff, that's fine, and that's dandy, and, and that's what we're here for. Uh, but what, when I moved down to Los Angeles, uh, I'm a native San Franciscan, so I'm a native Californian, San Francisco, Los Angeles, two different worlds, same state. So when I came down here, my main priority in life was – I want to be an actor. I want to, you know, I want, I want to be rich, I want to be famous, I want to be this, I want to be that. And I had no idea the actual purpose that I was coming down here was to meet Tracy and to find someone who believed in me just as much, even if not more than I believed in myself. Um, and I just fell in love with her instantly. And um, so Tracy became disabled back in 2015. Unfortunately, we don't want to go too far into that, but um, I 
instantly was thrust into the position of being a caregiver for her. And there was no uh, period where I decided, well, what am I going to do? It was just instantaneously. It's like when you breathe in, you breathe out. So instantaneously, I knew that I'm taking care of my wife uh, because this this ring here, um, it, it means something to me, you know, um, and the commitment that she made to me, I made to her. And I believe that that she would take care of me if the, the shoe was on the other foot. So, you know, a lot of things have changed. My priorities have changed. But my commitment to what I'm doing in the moment still exists. So when I'm doing entertainment, I'm 100% on it, and I give it my all. But when I'm with Miss Tracy, I'm 100% on it. I give it my all, whether it's doctor appointments, medications, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, coloring her hair, uh, doing her nails. I give her manicures, pedicures, and we go for walks and drives and. Um, and, and stuff of that nature. So she is truly my best friend, and I am her world. And you know, that's just, gosh, you know what an honor that is. Wow. So from what I gather, you're a very positive uh, guy, Steve. Right? Well, you're very positive about yourself and your life and what you do. You're very caring and loving. So can you tell us? Do you have a message to the world right now? In you know, in this pandemic. Well, um, first and foremost, you know, my the source of my strength. Uh, it does not originate from me, you know. Um, I am a very spiritual man, um, and, and I believe that there is a power greater than myself uh, that is guiding everything and protecting everything. And that's where I draw my sense of security from, and that's where I draw my inspiration and my hope. Uh, so in this time of pandemic, I would say first and foremost, you know, take care of yourself. Um, and, and, and what that really means for me is, is, is protecting myself and protecting my wife as well as protecting other people. And, and that means, you know, I wear a mask just as much to protect you from me as I do to protect me and my wife from you. Um, another thing is don't give up. Uh, don't give up hope. Don't get wrapped up in an everyday onslaught of the news because media, um, it, I'm not saying that any media is false or true or whatnot, but too much of that media in it in general is driven to get the attention, and most of the attention is drawn by negativity rather than positivity. So too much involvement in that uh, can really drain you. It can really change your perspective. Uh, I do keep in touch with the news because I need to know what's going on locally and globally as well, but to not get wrapped up in it and not put all my eggs in that basket, you know? Awesome. So I just want you to tell us a little bit more about the national commercials. How was it working on a national TV commercial? Um, you know, it's it, it's funny because the national commercials versus the regional commercials, there's not much difference, obviously, except the pay. Um, but what is what is good about it is that um, it's you're working with professionals. You're working with people who are, are, are paying their mortgage, who are sending their children to college. And so there's nothing but professionalism. And everyone from the grip to the catering to the DP to casting to, I mean, to the, to the talent, to everyone. Um, and that's what I love most about working with a really, a really positive professional group. Um, you know, is that no one's putting themselves above anyone else and no one's putting themselves below anyone else. We're there to work to further our career, to make a good product. Uh, you want to make a commercial, you want to make something that they're going to pick up for more than just one cycle. Because you can make a lot of commercials and they can just get thrown in the can. What you want is you want something that is good, good quality, good energy, because you can feel if that crew is working good together. Uh, and the national commercials that, that I worked with, there was definitely a good positive vibe. They've gotten picked up. Uh, East Coast, um, you know, many cycles, lots of residuals. Those things are, are, are very good. I think you froze there for a sec, Matt. Uh, sorry about that. We just had a couple of uh, like uh, times when it dropped out. Not a problem, man. 
Yeah. One of the other things you have to do too is you have to keep your head on a swivel and you got to be able to adapt to this new technology that we're dealing with. You know, yeah. let the let it reboot and, and reconnect. So. Yeah, but that was a great interview today, Steve. Thank you very much for coming on the show. We tried to get it live on Roku as well on on Easy Way Network Roku. So hopefully that went through there as well. There were quite a few people watching. I thought you did a great job, Steve. Thank you very much for coming on the show once again, and I wish you all the best in your future. And just before we finish, are you working? Do you have anything in the works right now? Uh, so, uh, uh, Matt, I do want to thank you very much for having me um, uh, this morning. Um, so, we just I just finished uh, my first co-lead on a um, on a feature film, and we have a couple more shots uh, to to do before we can finish and then go into editing. Uh, but we got held up with the pandemic, so we're waiting for that to finish. Um, I was I just was uh, I just finished a couple of regional commercials. And um, first time on set, actually, with the protocols with the COVID 19s and whatnot. So that was interesting. Uh, the whole signing a contract, making sure everyone was COVID free, wearing masks. Uh, so I got a couple of commercials that are going to be coming out. Uh, the um, Count Vlad of, of Phagoras uh, should be, we should be wrapping pretty soon. Uh, it was a great, great movie, my first co lead. Um, super excited about that. So I'll let you know when those things come out. And uh, yeah, man, you know, uh, hopefully you'll have me back someday and, and uh, we'll talk more about current events. Yeah, well, also, I'd like to have you on my other show, The Artist Process. And we can do a scene on that in the near future. Sounds good, man. Yeah, it sounds yeah. good. Yeah, awesome job today, Steve. And uh, I'm going to end the broadcast now, but just stay on the line, okay? Thanks a lot. I would just like to thank all the viewers for watching and for watching this video later. Thanks again to easywaynetwork.com. This is sponsored by the Easy Way Wall. So please go get your free easywaywall.com account and you can promote yourself further. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, Steve.